All right, it's a day late and a few hundred kilometers removed removed from where it all happened, but Evangelina Briggs is Canada's new national bouldering champion uh, at the at the young age of 15 or 16. It's still 15, right? Yeah, your birthday's 15. late in the year? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Or cool. I had it in September. Sorry, say again, you had it in? I had it in September. Okay, gotcha. All right, so... Uh, it, Normally, I would be on site to, to do these interviews, but not this year. So uh, we're, we're just going to pretend that we're back at the venue having a sideline uh, interview after uh, after the event. So first of all, the, the only top that you didn't manage to secure in the entire event was number two of the semifinals after flashing all of qualifiers and having another stunning round in semis. And then, of course, you topped everything in finals. So can you tell me a little bit about semifinals number two? Um, was there anything special about that problem that made it really hard for you? And do you uh, are you going to have nightmares about that problem uh, for the next couple of days? Oh, yes, I've been thinking about it. Um, I think I tend to on those kind of problems, like any sort of big boulder overhanging kind of technical climb, I tend to like overthink my feet a lot and even just my positioning and I take a really long time. So right now I don't exactly have the best endurance I was, and I was at the top of it and just, yeah, that, that was <laughs> one of still, those, and that was one of those problems, kind of like uh, problem four from finals, where if you do take a lot of attempts, it, it just like really gasses you out. It was a big one. So yeah, interesting. Okay. Um, in, in the, fi in the finals though, I wanted to ask about problem number two, because this was, um, where you had a really impressive flash on this hard slab and Alana Yip goes out last and she doesn't come back into ISO as fast as you might have expected and a few minutes tick by and I was wondering if at that point you understood that you were leading the pack um, and and how that made you feel if that was something that you realized at that point. I tried not to think about it too much because sometimes I like if I get my hopes up or if I like start thinking that but I was I was a bit I was a bit hopeful like I guess lead going on to the third climb it gave a bit more confidence just because like oh I think I'm actually might be ahead now just from the first two tops mm -hmm. so it definitely gave me a bit more confidence going into the third climb and then on on finals problem number three, I was watching with some friends uh, in the in the Discord, and one of them was Eddie Falk, and he noticed something that I didn't notice because I'm actually not very analytical with climbing stuff. But he noticed that you were the only one to use the the left hand crimp and then right hand palm into the into the volume for that uh, start of the third problem. Uh, and then, of course, your your bait on the top was also unique, going feet first all the way through, and it looked like you were going to rip your ankle right off on the on the final jug. Um, so, so my question about this is: Do you think you have a particularly unique climbing style, or was that just you know one of those things where, for whatever reason, you just read it a bit different and it seemed to work? Like, is it uh, is it something where you're coming out of youth climbing and you still have a lot of those youth climbing habits? What's what do you think about your style? Um, I don't know. I know for the start, I. I was thinking, well, I was thinking about a lot in ISO. I was like trying to decide which way I wanted to go to go for. And I guess when I got on, I just decided to do that. And then for the top, it's kind of been a joke recently, almost like going feet first for things. Cause I've done that in a couple comps recently. And I was, I had been joking about it. Like even before finals, I was like, I want to do that in finals. And so when I got up there, I, I noticed that I could. And I was like, you know, I think it might be able to be done the other way. But I always like going feet first for things. And I do tend to do that quite a bit because, I mean, feet can just be like really long arms. Like you can reach quite far with them and you've still got two other limbs to hold you on. So, yeah. Interesting. Coming into this weekend, um, I'm curious if there are any names that you were really excited to compete against because for the most part, like aside from local tour to blocks or whatever you've been fairly limited and forced to mostly just climb against other youth competitors um so on your drive up were there any names in the field where you were really excited to try yourself up against like say an alana yip or something like that i mean alana's kind of an obvious one i mean like yeah that was pretty crazy to get to compete against her and then I guess competing against Madison again, because we had provincials together and it was like, like finals was so tight. And, oh, 
Yeah, I mean, everybody there was just... I, most of the people there I hadn't competed against. I know, like, there are some of the youth competitors, like Jacqueline and Molly. And they were all people who I've been competing against for a while now. But most of the competitors there I'd never really competed against. And, yeah. All right. So I know... Um, I wanted to ask you because I seem, seem to remember that you maybe played hockey in in the earlier part of your life or you had a different sport. And I think I remember like talking to your dad a long time ago where you were kind of trying to decide maybe and I, maybe I'm thinking about somebody else. But did you go through a phase where you're trying to figure out if you wanted to really commit to climbing rather than hockey or a different sport? I don't think there was ever a phase where I, where I was trying to decide about that. I know when I was younger, though, I did. I tried out tons of different sports. Like my dad's been into soccer, so he used to be a so he he would coach us when we were younger, and we would have that. And I did play hockey for two years, which I really quite enjoyed. But you know, I tried out. I had school sports. I tried out volleyball. I tried. I did gymnastics for a year or two. But as soon as I started climbing, it was like, I I always enjoyed the other sports, but climbing it was like very different. I just loved going to it every single time. In your in your post win oh. interview with Francois, you you made it clear that being competitive is kind of what you really enjoy about climbing, which I love, by the way. Um, did you feel that competitive in those other sports? Or is that something that's kind of just appeared in uh, now that you're climbing? Uh, I've, I've always felt pretty competitive and everything. I remember even when I was younger, I was always like, I was I always used to say I want to go to the Olympics. And I had no clue what I wanted to go for. <laughs> I was like, maybe I'll go for running or jumping or something. But yeah, I think I've always been pretty competitive, climbing even more so though. Right. I think the more I enjoy something and the more I care about something, I mean, the more competitive I feel in it. That's really cool. Um, just a few weeks ago, you were still too young to compete at the North American Cup Series in Canada, right? Um, yeah. And now all of a sudden, like, you know, a month later, you get this big win at Nationals. Um, you also missed out on your first opportunities at Youth Worlds because of COVID. Um, I'm really curious how you just felt over this period of the last two years where your opportunities to compete and like push yourself probably all just like evaporated all of a sudden. And for somebody that is really competitive, do you even enjoy climbing if you are just like stuck at a home wall or just training at the gym every once in a while? Like how did you still love climbing or was it really hard? Um, I still, so the thing is I still love climbing. So I, I still enjoy doing it, but I just don't have like, it's just that extra bit of motivation to, I guess, push myself to actually train harder. That kind of, it started to almost go away a little. It was really difficult to find that motivation again. Hmm. And I think it really sort of like, I started really getting back into like that, motivated I guess motivated state was when the comp started appearing again that I wasn't at so I know watching youth worlds in the summer it was hard so I was like oh I, I wish I could be there you know I was looking at the different problems so I was like oh I wish I could have tried that but it really helped with motivation hmm. you're you're also coming of age and climbing at this weird time where like if you go back a few years that the kids that were like maybe like five years older than you it wasn't really part of their mindset to to try all three disciplines you kind of specialize or you were just like boulder and lead or whatever and then all of a sudden in your area you're seeing all these different comps where you're being encouraged to do everything you're like do speed do lead do boulder um and now that the olympics is evolving and speed is being separated off you see a lot of people kind of bailing on the speed idea again um have you kind of made up your mind about what kind of climbing you want to keep training or at this point are you kind of happy just sampling everything doing a bit of uh, a bit of this a bit of that like i saw you competed a speed comp just recently as well um so how do you feel about the three disciplines um i think it's really cool that you know people are getting more into them and i am definitely more of bouldering and lead than speed but i would like to continue like i think speed's such a cool sport and it's not the same as bouldering and lead and i know it's like i'm not as big of a fan of it but i would love to keep you know, competing in it. And then I guess for lead is like a realm where we are, we don't have tons of super tall lead walls. We do have a new, there are a couple gyms with taller walls, but I haven't been training it too much, but I've always loved lead. Like I remember I could never, I, I've never really liked bouldering any more than lead. Hmm. So that's something which I definitely want to keep training, especially with all the lead comps coming up in the spring. Do you, and the... nationals, I know. 
I was gonna say that the, the natural follow-up question is, do you think that you're as good in lead as you are in bouldering? Because now everybody's gonna say, oh, if you somehow just surprised everybody at nationals for bouldering. I've always, I don't think right now, right now I'm definitely lacking the endurance and I haven't done many comp style lead routes. I know I always, I know, I guess a couple years ago, cause I haven't really done lead comps in a while, but I tended to feel stronger in top rope comps than bouldering comps. So I'm hoping that now I keep, like now I start up training lead that I'll, I'll feel stronger in it, but I guess I'm not really sure yet. Hmm. All right. Um, and then just gonna wrap it up. Uh... This comp looked pretty, um, I don't want to say it, but I'll say it. It looked a little bit easy for you. Um, and for for athletes like yourself, where you show up and you you kind of become fairly dominant in your youth age category, that's really cool. But we always say, you know, you know, at some level down the road, they're going to hit a wall where it's no longer this easy and they're going to have to start trying harder. And I think this was the first comp where we got to see you compete at a, at a new level, like a higher level than you've ever had to compete before. And you did an excellent job. Um, so when you look forward to maybe a youth world championships or a continental comp or maybe a world cup, um, do you kind of have any guesses as to where you think you're going to really start to find it challenging where the tops don't just fall the second you get on the wall? What do you, uh, what do you think about those, those next steps? Are they going to be uh, just as easy as this one was? <laughs> I mean... I think it'll be difficult, but I think it'll be, you know, I've always loved like my favorite problems are the ones where like you fall off. And I mean, I, when I, when I see a problem, it's like, I want to flash it, but at the same time, it's always a little bit, I guess, exciting when you fall. Cause mm -hmm. you're like, Oh, this is hard. Now you get to keep trying it. So it's the problem too, in semifinals, it was, even though all the others were the other, like the other climbs were so fun, but that was like, almost the most enjoyable of them because hmm. you just have to try it that much harder. That's cool. All right. Well, I'm going to leave it there. We'll, uh, we'll just pretend that we were, we were hanging out in Quebec city. Uh, it was really fun to watch you climb just as another Ontario person. I was really proud of yourself and Maddie in Indiana for, for repping the province so hard. Uh, and obviously I'm excited to see whatever you do next. So thank you very much, Evangelina and congratulations on your win. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me.